Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast, powered by GamblersWorld.net. I'm your host, John Higgs, and here's the chipper coming in. Little technical I'm difficulties with the chippers. We're live, chipper. It's all right. Don't worry about it, fella. It's okay. You're here. I'm on the phone. I don't get it. It, it happens. It's all right. I'm we got somewhere. No, you're you're in you're in a live show now, fella. I you're just put this us. on to uh, double check, and I just don't understand. It's all right. So Chip all has right, now joined go. us. What's that? So Chip is with us uh, here on Monday, July the 29th. And uh, listen, we're powered, as always, by GamblersWorld.net, where you can find myself, Chip, and nine other great handicappers. Doug, of course, over at DocSports.com. Please hit the like button. We're trying to get to that 14 and then 15,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We got a Twitter for all of us. You can come check that out there. We got three baseball winners up for today for you here. We're gonna we got NFL football starting Thursday. I mean, a lot going on. A special, the 429 rest of the baseball season package is up. You can go get that at gamblersworld.net. And of course, the 3, 7, and 30-day packages are all posted guaranteed. Or you get a little credit. Now Chip is officially with us now. Now he's got a better picture. Here we go. Well, you know, because I was I was setting up on the phone, and I'm looking, I'm sitting on the screen, and I don't see you guys. So I said, let me see what's going on with the laptop, and all of a sudden I'm on. So uh, anything to do with stardom, I'm I'm involved with. So, uh. <laughs> well, welcome on into the show. Welcome on. I'm sorry, into the I'm show. sorry, but I, you know, I tried to load up like usual on the phone. It happens. Uh, Yep. I guess it does. I guess it does because it did this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You know, you're here now. That's all matters. And uh, you, you know, of course, you got a good one there. You got your uh, Yankees and Phillies. Doug will be looking at Pitt Houston. I got Minnie and the Mets. But let's, before we jump <laughs> into that, yes, we have NFL football coming up. But let's talk about the White Sox. We and Doug kind of t- talked a little bit off stage. We're so, talking about, like, man, how bad are the White Sox right now? 14 straight losses, which puts them up in rarefied air. Uh, in, in, our time, Kansas City lost 19 in 2005, the Orioles 19 in 2021. Before that, we'll go back to uh, Chipper's Youth, 1889, Louisville Colonials and the Cleveland Spiders kind of stuff in 1899. So this is kind of rarefied air when you get to these bad losing streaks. It's not, you know, would you be more inclined to take a, a underdog here? White Sox, they're, they're due. And I'm not, a, you know, I always say, you, you poop in one hand, you hope in the other, see which one fills up first. You're going to need a lot of uh, nice orange foam for your hands to get that smell off your hands. But we have 14 losses already built up for us. Is the plus 150 underdog worth it? Is it the run line? You lay Kansas City with their 21 and 27 road record. Do you want to lay a minus 105 or 110 run line? Do you want to lay 165? I'm, I'm going to start with uh, Doug's thoughts on this one. This is a, a, a bad team. Let's be honest. They're going to be trading away guys pretty soon, you think. But is the 150 worth it, or do you think Kansas City keeps going? You, you roll on that train until yeah, you know. Passes. To be perfectly honest, the, the my if okay, the if if I have to make a pick, okay, I guess I would I would split the middle and I'd take them on the minus one run line, Kansas City. Okay, okay. I I'd do that because I, I kind of what you're saying. I don't necessarily trust them on the road, even though they have dominated the White Sox recently. You know, and in fact. Of the those fourteen losses, nine or should be ten of those have uh, have covered the team that played the White Sox on the one point five run line. So I mean, it's just besides being just losing bad, it's really bad. Now, so I would I would pass personally, but I would I would do the adjusted run line of minus one. And here's the thing, though, if you have been writing playing against the White Sox, okay, for example, and you've been on it, let's just say eight of the last 10, seven in a row, whatever it is, you've won. Okay. I'd have no problem. If I was on that, if I was doing that, I would have no problem just playing Kansas city, just on the run line again, because I've already made a lot of money doing it. Right. Yes. Okay. So one, I'm not gonna worry about one game, but if I haven't done it, I don't want to be the guy that yeah. jumps on, on Kansas city and then they lose. Okay. Because then I'd feel stupid, you know, for doing that. So that's my thoughts on it. The, their last 10 games for the White Sox, you're looking at odds of last game they were plus 110, which is weird, but 135. Again, that was Crochet on Hill. 
160, 210, 240, 120. Again, crochet. 160, 200, 210, 205, 140. Although that was who's that verse? Schuster and Keller. You know, I mean, just giant big numbers. So it's not like you're if you're taking a fave, you're not laying some kind of dainty little number here. Chances are you're you're averaging out to the almost two to one range in a 150 or one and a half kind of range. And the fact that you're getting zero offense from them as well. I mean, they are an under team to boot. It's just, it's tough. And like you said, if you took whoever they're playing the last five, just money line, like, Hey, I'm going to roll it. You're up 500 because it's even money when you're laying with a fave. You'd say, eh, who cares? Uh, I'll be five and one. But if you're coming in where you're, you missed out on 14 and 0 already, it's 14 and 0. And you want to come in at 14 0 says, this is a winner. I'm, I'm against that. I'm no, thank you. Yep. Um, Chip, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what, what would you be th- again? I didn't bet this game. Part of me wants to take flexion. I, I do. I'm not going to lie. But like, why wouldn't I take? They're going to win again. They're not going to lose 62 straight. That's that's really be something if that happened. <laughs> I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say that. Who knows? Maybe they will. I don't know. Good. Chip. Well, for the most part, I just uh, throw the White Sox. I put them aside. I don't even look at the contest. I don't care. Although I did get beat this past week once. When I tried with their big lefty, thinking that he was going to look to impress before the trade deadline and uh, just didn't come through. But, uh, you know, the only, only other team like this that play like the White Sox were the 62 Mets and expansion team. They only won 40 of 160 games. And uh, I lived through every one of those. <laughs> but I don't think they had a losing streak like this, though. I don't think they had bad losing. I mean, they might have lost like eight in a row, nine in a row, and win a game, lose 10. Um, they weren't at a 14 in a row streak like this. I, I'm not quite sure. I just don't remember them winning very much. I think they lost the first uh, eight or nine games they ever played. And uh, um, and this was all in the polo grounds before they even moved to Shea Stadium in 1964. But uh, they were bad. They were really bad. And uh, these White Sox, I can't believe in this day and age with free agency and everything else that they can be this bad. I mean, they're really – they're approaching – I mean, we thought Oakland two years ago might have been approaching that record with least amount of wins. And, uh, you know, they got better as the season got long, got along, and, and now they're they're pretty respectable at least. But um, I don't know how this happened with this club. I really don't. Yeah. The, the, I, I'd just like to chime in on one thing Chip said of talking about the Mets. One of my uh, one of my all-time favorites, uh, uh, there's a there was an old – he was the manager of the New York Mets at the time, Casey Stengel. Okay? Yeah. You can look him up. Okay, whatever – and one of the most famous things he said to that team, okay, uh, as during spring training, he goes, guys, we're going to win. It just won't be with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know, he had another great line about a, a potential catcher they had named Greg Goosen. And, he, and he's, he's talking about the exploits of all these players. And we got Goosen come on up in here. He's 20 years old. In 10 years, he's got a chance to be 30. <laughs> yeah, he, he just full of stuff like that continuously. Those are good. That's good stuff back in the day. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, he, I managed yeah. good. They played bad. You know, that's the. Yeah. He he would have been a Twitter all star back in the day, Paul. Now where's ESPN when oh, you yeah. need it for sound bites? Yes, that's yeah. the, the the twenty longest losing streaks. The Mets do not make the list, although there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams tied at 18, 18 straight losses. The Mets are not in the top twenty here. The yep. Mets are not in the top 20. A lot of, I mean, the 61 Phillies are number three tied at 23. Yeah. Uh, the 43 at Philadelphia Athletics at 20. 69 Expos with 20. Uh, 75 Tigers at 19. And then the Royals and Orioles both had 19 losses in 2005 and 2021. But, yeah, um, <laughs> weird. How, you know, because we've seen some bad teams, right? And, and you're talking about the, the, the Mets don't even – they didn't get they didn't get to 18. And here we are, four games away from potentially cracking into a top twenty all-time uh, loserness, badness, losing streak. One? Losing streak. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to put a fun little title on there. <laughs> horrendous, horrendous run. Um, you know, who just, hasn't been on lost, losing streaks? So. Listen, source, I guess. You see the three seven third day packages. Why wouldn't you? Eight and four last week here on the video in the free picks, folks. Plus seven ten two and zero oh on Friday. Me and Chip delivering for you. And two of those losses were my crummy props where the guy in front of me who wasn't listed knocks, you know, he he goes, doubles up his over bases. And uh, then I got a guy who gets two walks and a run scored in Ozuna. So really, 
we could be ten and ten and two. Well, but and, it is and what one it of is. those. And one of those losses when uh, you begged me not to give you the Yankees, but you know I had to have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what though, you made up for it because you had the Reds at a at, at a plus one twenty five, and then I came in with a dog as well, plus one twenty. So it waves out that sixty five again. Good week on the video. We're gonna keep it going. You know, we'll, we'll keep it going, Chipper. Let's uh, let's start with your. We're talking about lovable losers. Here come the Yankees. Oh, have they have they turned the corner here? They got a big Sunday night win. Louis Heel is on the hill. The guy's had a nice overall season. The numbers yeah. are there for the season. Um, yeah. Has he turned the corner? I don't know. This line, and I was looking at some of the Ruby props here, which tells me we'll probably get a, a low scoring game here. You're right. The Phillies minus one thirty two with Zach Wheeler taking about a buck twenty back with uh, Louis Gill here. Total of eight and a half. Listen, Zach Wheeler's been fabulous. I mean, just on the whole year. I mean, 98 whip, 255 ERA for the season, 10 and 2 at home, 177 ERA, 174 batting average against 88 whip. I mean, lights out. And then Louis Gill, I mean, he had that rough little patch. Was that a little dead arm from him hitting his Ingans limit? He gets a second win here. I, I don't t- I don't want to steal all the thunder here, but that you know, I you know me, my Louis Gill, I've been waiting for that guy to crash and burn since uh, the beginning of the year, everybody was like the guy's second coming of Louisiana Lightning or something. But go ahead, Tipper. What do you got for us? Well, um, you know, last night the Yankees beat the Red Sox on that Sunday night game. And um, I heard the, the, the broadcaster say it's, you know, uncharacteristically the Yankees to be able to score eight runs without hitting a home run. Well, for crying yeah. out loud, if the other club doesn't know how to pick up a ground ball and throw it the first place, this Boston team is one of the worst defensive groups I've ever seen. All you have to do is put the ball in play and you're going to score runs against them. The Yankees didn't need to hit home runs last night. And tonight they're facing Zach Wheeler, former Met, of course, and uh, he's been really consistent the last two, three years. He's 10-4 and four right now. His ERA is 2.55. And, you know, that Yankee lineup has so many holes. And, and Sean, you had said that um, from the props and things you saw, the, you looked as though it was indicating it was going to be a low-scoring game. And that's pretty much how I, how I see it as well. Um, Luis Gill had that great start and then um, faltered for a, a three, four weeks, says that he's found a new grip on his slider. And that's mm-hmm. been the difference in the last three games. He's only given up one run in each of those games, uh, going five innings. Um you know, the Yankees have taken four of the last five against Philadelphia going back, of course. Um, they don't play every season. Um, you know, this Philadelphia team with their starters have gone into the seventh inning 27 straight times they've been winners. And that's really incredible. Is Wheeler going to be able to make it there? And if they're going that deep from their starting pitching, um, I think it's, uh, you know, it's obvious they're, they're not in trouble and they're not giving up runs. So I think this game stays under. I really do. Um, uh I know that the the ERA a lifetime is 5.2 along those lines for Wheeler against the Yankees, but very limited action. And like I said, I still, that Yankee lineup, I think it just has so many holes in it. And um, like I said, they're more of a state, they're more of an all or nothing type club. And uh, if Wheeler can uh, keep from making any mistakes, I think this game stays under the total. Shipper with the under eight and a half. I'm not, I, I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, you come down to two really kind of stud pitchers. If, if you get with their best stuff that they have all year, it's kind of like an even matchup. But then it's come to the lineup. I could I could walk Judge or or Soto. Who you're not walking everybody on the Phillies who hit like the, the yeah. Yanks are a two man team. I, you know, I agree with you under. Uh, Doug, your thoughts on the total here at eight and a half? Yeah. Maybe like well, a sign. Here, but this is uh, actually when I first started doing this this morning. Uh, the the game was at nine. Nine okay, yes. this morning, and then it then it dropped to eight and a half. And you know, nine seemed like a high total, but you know, both these teams do score a lot of runs. They're both top five in the offense. So, I, the I kind of I got chased off the total on the game. But one thing that didn't change was the first five innings. Okay, and that's still at four and a half. Uh, on that one. And I believe it's just minus 115. So that's not a bad number there. So with these two starting pitchers, I agree. I think they have the potential to do a really good job. Okay. For as long as they're pitching. So give me the under four and a half for the first five innings. Under four and a half there. We like the under for the game. Chips officially under the eight and a half for the game. And the Yanks, you mentioned, listen, all or nothing home run team. You go get Chaz uh, Jism, which is okay. That's great. Can, why wouldn't you Trying to get some other pieces here. Is that is that the big call here a day before the trade deadline? What I don't it? know. They picked up Grissom and, um, you know, 
I just maybe it, it's something personal. I, I think their second baseman makes so many mental errors, running base errors, and um, physical errors as well as hitting 220. I'm not a big fan. Third base, they have a big hole. First base now, they got Ben Rice. He's at least four for 52 right now. So, um, Ben Rice, I don't know where to go with this team. I think they have so many holes. I don't think any move they can make on a trading deadline, uh, unless they can bring in another dominating pitcher and they can win two games in the series with two great starters. Uh, like Houston did a couple of years ago and a few other teams have been doing it in playoffs. You get the two big guys to come out there and you'll win a seven game series. Uh, well, we're going to move to Doug's cubbies and Morel for Paredes, Doug. What, what that looks like a lateral move to me. I like speaking of corner infielders, the Yankees could have used him. The Astros could have used him. I mean, the Dodgers, Cleveland could have picked up the bat. What is that trade for your Cubs? Give me a I, thought. I don't know what the Cubs are doing, to tell you the truth. Uh, they're kind of going nowhere. I mean, you know, they're basically – they've been in last place, uh, either tied with Cincinnati or by themselves for quite some time. Yeah, they're not terrible in terms of, you know, 50 and 56, but, you know, not really going anywhere. Do you think they're going to – do they look like they have the potential to become a playoff team? I don't think so. Okay, there. So I'm, I'm just kind of neutral with the Cubs. I mean, I'm glad when they win or lose, but in terms of, you know, being uh, really excited as a fan and picking up – uh, that guy, yeah, doesn't doesn't do it, doesn't move the needle for me. Just bizarre. I mean, I like Steele, Assad, Amana, good pitchers. Talion's having a nice year. I mean, you have a pitching staff. You thought you'd be able to score some runs. Just a disaster year for Chicago. Disaster. Yeah, and bullpen has been lousy too. Yeah. That's that's another key. So no, it's it's not a good team. I mean, you know, I mean, realistically, what was it? Eighty-two was their win total. Yes. So I mean, so yeah. So if that's the case, I mean, could they still get there? Yeah, but you're not going anywhere with at, yeah. with eighty-two wins. So that's not a big deal. And that's the worst because you're a market team that's supposed to win, right? You have money, and yet you're just a middling bunch with guys who are underperforming. Just a just a weird season. I mean, you look at some of these offensive stats, and even as bad as the offenses are. You look at some of these pitchers, nobody's really – I mean, you got a couple guys having really good years, but then you got a team like Cleveland's got half their staff with five ERAs. You got guys uh, – you know, just it's 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 just odd. It's just odd. Teams are hammering to get starting pitching, but yet you look up and down these lineups like Seattle and you see a bunch of guys hitting 205, 217, and how, where is it? How, yeah. it? It makes no sense to me. When you look at the ERAs of some pitchers on most teams, right, you have two good pitchers, and then the other three are terrible – but then you look at lineups, and there's two guys hitting on most teams. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's just well, it's modern baseball. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe yeah. it. Yeah, you know, strikeouts are cool. Not to me, they're not. We're going to stick with um, Doug and the Central here, but moving to the Pirates and the Houston Astros. Apparently, they got a young kid here named Paul Skeens. A lot of hype on this guy. I don't know, never heard of him. Apparently, he's he's a strikeout pitcher. Minus one thirty-five on the road versus Mister Balas. The guy's got loss in his name. I don't know if that's a good sign if I want to be a pitcher. Yeah. Total is a seven and a half. Um, I, what's there to say about Paul Skeens? The guy's fabulous. Do I want to lay with him as a favorite on the road when they – I mean, look at these games. Take out that 14-2 game, 2-1, 1-0, 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, 2-1. I'm worried. I'm worried about them scoring runs when he's on the hill. I don't know if I want to be a favorite with him. But it's not my game to choose from. It's yours. What do you think, Doug? Well, you know, Skeen's taking center stage yet again and against a team that doesn't strike out much, okay, the Houston Astros. But, you know, let's not sell Pittsburgh completely short on this one. They've won 11 of the last 16. They're two games back of the loss column for the last wild card spot. Yeah. And if you look at their run differential, it, it, it certainly isn't good, but it is absolutely superior to St. Louis, which we talked about, you know, a few shows back on this one. Uh, to me, what I'm going to do here. I think Skeens obviously gives them a great shot at winning. Uh, you mentioned Jake Bloss, uh, last three He's made three starts, a uh, total of 11 and two-thirds innings, giving up 16 hits, nine runs. If Pittsburgh can score a few runs, I think they're in good shape. But here's the thing. I don't like their bullpen. Okay, It's, it's been a concern all season long. So I'm going to recommend Skeen for the first five innings, but I'm going to give up minus 0 0.5 on the run line to get it. And uh, the price is, you know, is decent at minus 115. So put me down officially for Pittsburgh on the first five innings on the run line of minus 0 0.5. Uh, 0 .5. Which basically means Pittsburgh has to win the first five, folks. You know, they're oh. not winning. A, they can't score a half a run. It doesn't – there's no half runs in baseball. <laughs> they get it. One nothing, it's a winner. 
Chip, what are your thoughts on this? First five or full game or even just uh, – I think this, really interested. I think the schemes overall has energized this Pirate team, and they seem to have a different – a little giddy up in their step now, particularly when he's pitching. You know, their bullpen is a concern. Don't you said it. I mean, he's 6-1. He could be 9-10 one easily if they yeah. had held leads when they removed him out of games in his first four or five starts. He's going seven innings or better, only giving up two runs or less. Um to come up a strong favorite, I mean, yesterday this Pirate team was um, – um, they've been bet down since uh, the opening line. Uh, yes. And, and my first impression when I look at this, I said, whoa, the, how can the Pirates be such a strong favorite on the road? We know Houston isn't quite the same. They're only five games over 500. Pirates are one game over 500. But I think this scheme has given them a jolt in the arm and it's a shot. It's like B12. And I like Pittsburgh here. And um, I wouldn't go the other way. There's no way. Houston um, was in a spot yesterday. They had a, against the Dodgers. They could have come up big, and uh, they just did nothing. So uh, um, I think Pittsburgh is the side. I, I just, when I look, when I watch them now, and they seem so energetic, and, and this, this cruise, I mean, you got cruise in Miami, you got cruise in Cincinnati, you got cruise in Pittsburgh. And um, boy, they, all three of them, when the ball leaves the bat, you know it's going somewhere. Yeah, a lot of power with those, those three young guys. I like, I, you know, and Dela Cruz of Miami gets no no real love down there. He's, he's pretty solid, but definitely not the fan for of Eli or uh, O'Neill for sure. But uh, the official play here, run, um, yeah, first five Pittsburgh run line minus one fifteen from Doug. And, and I gotta say, like I like I talked about the White Sox at the plus one fifty because it doesn't interest me at the Royals minus 105. Houston at plus 120 doesn't interest me versus a guy who could probably go seven innings if they don't baby him and take him out in the six. You'd be expecting to go semi-deep in a game, even if he's not striking out the Strohs because they're professional hitters and they're not really strikeout kind of team. I, it's There's no interest at plus one two for Astros. I'm not I'm not going to go against the guy who's uh, pitching great this season. So I'm with you. Let's go with that one there. Find all the Doug's uh, premium stuff over at DocSports.com. Now, I will be talking about the Twins and the New York Metropolitans here. Carlos Quintana is on the hill, minus 110. Totals eight and a half against Mr. Woods Richardson here. And, and this game to me, this is not that it's a, a flat out kind of a, a no brainer kind of play here. Uh, much like the Yankees and Red Sox, are, you know, you kind of look at the teams they're playing because they're off a big series. The Mets were off the Braves series. They lost the last two where you're thinking maybe they come in and win three out of four even. You know, you, ended, you beat Sale. Lopez, you knew it was going to be a tough matchup, but you're, you know, not much offense going there. And now you got the Twins who you're thinking, oh, who are these Twins guys? Like, I could see them just kind of overlooking the Twins because, hi, it's Minnesota, right? The, the Twins have a better record than the New York Mets, and no one talks about this team. It's bizarre. And the guy I love, Pablo Lopez, he had been their worst starter. I mean, Joe Ryan's been solid. Uh, this kid here, uh, Richard, I mean, the guy's got a one whip on, on the season. I mean, the guy's – you don't even hear about him. Bailey Ober's having a great season. Yep. I mean, a good staff. Royce Lewis, the key to the, the lineup, I think. Everybody talks about Byron Buxton, and he's rejuvenated. Rejuven the guy's 32. They're going for this guy to have a healthy year for the last seven years. That's great. But just the guys – Correa's having a nice little season. Jeffers is a power guy. Uh, uh, Larnage, they got a bunch of like nice pieces that nobody talks about, and I'm gonna get like even money here, a little plus 105, whatever it is. I'm taking the twins, I'm gonna take the twins all series here. It is a team, I'm not saying they're Orioles esque, where the Orioles are always like an underdog on the road or whatever. Like, and they're like, well, how are the Orioles underdog the last two years? They went on the road. The twins are a team that just wins games, no one talks about them, they think they're a bunch of losers. Uh, high, they might overtake. Uh, Cleveland here win this division. It's they're neck and neck right now. Give me Minnesota here against the Mets. So, to this and this is a prime example. People are going to run in and just take the Mets. Oh, it's the Mets. They've been so hot for the last month. But don't sell the Twins short here. This is a good little club. I like the Twinkies plus one hundred and five. I'm going to give Chip a first, maybe rebuttal. Maybe he likes the Mets. I know he's a Yankee guy. Who knows what he likes here in New York. Well, actually, I am a Met guy, too, but um, I do have a side on this one posted with my three-pack tonight at gamblersworld.net. Um, but I also think we have a winner with the with the total in this game. You know, you're Simon Woods Richardson, your 3-1 starter for Minnesota. Um, 
was originally drafted by the Mets, traded for Marcus Stronum. Hey, how'd that work out for them? And um, now he's pitching for Minnesota against the Mets at City Field. Uh, Quintana, five and six, 4.02 ERA. I don't think we expected too much more out of him. He's given up 18 home runs and just over 100 innings. Um, and previous to the last two losses, like we had said before, the Mets had been one of the hottest teams in baseball, 33 and 15, before the Braves just threw away from them. But um, a similarity between these two teams since June 6th, June 9th, excuse me, Minnesota leads the major leagues and runs scored to 234. The Mets are second with 232 in this 33 and 18 streak that they're on, 17 streak that they're on. So I think this game probably mostly goes over the total. And um, talking about overage and things along those lines, you know that in July 29th in 1915, 41-year-old Hornus Wagner hit a grand slam home run. 41 years old, the first or old. He was he was 41 in 1915. He was 41 in 1915. Yes, he had the oldest player to hit a, a grand slam at that time. And not to be outdone, because we spoke about Cy Young a number of times. Six, seven years, six years later, Cy Young at 54 years old pitched two innings of shutout ball. 1983 Steve Garvey's streak of 1,207 games was broken. Um, but best of all, we've got court cases in all the sports, right? And the USFL won their court case against the NFL for antitrust trust law. So Donald Trump was a winner again. He was awarded $1. Uh, the, the, the jury just didn't understand the value of a franchise um, being rejected from going into the NFL, which was his purpose. He was trying to get the New Jersey Generals and a few other of those USFL teams into the NFL. And uh, the NFL, you know, they said no. What an elite group they were. And uh, he won He won the case but lost the war. The USFL generals, Herschel Walker. I mean, Steve Young Not played really. in the USFL, right? Sam wasn't, Powers. Wasn't Reggie White in the USFL too as well? Yeah, yeah Philadelphia I mean, I think, or somewhere. I'm not sure. Jim Kelly? Jim Kelly. There was quite a few guys in the USFL. Well, the, yeah. you know, they, they had – they just started they, – they had waited another year, I believe, um, they might have had a better shot. It was a little too soon. I think uh, uh, Trump got a little anxious, and um, the league had the fold after that, even though they won the case, awarded $1. And um, I mean, that you're, that's tough. I mean, listen, we saw the ABA fold. I mean, the USFL and all this XFL kind of stuff, they, they try to get going. USFL might have been a decent, like Arena Football League. I, I You know, I know for us as a betting standpoint, it's like, oh, look at this football year, but you can't, you can't have that all. It's a, it'll be a whole different. Whether it's a a minor league division of college guys who might get drafted. I mean, how if you play football, you can't go from college and then hi, we're done in January and then let's start up in April and maybe we get picked up by NFL teams in in August. I mean, yeah, well, I think their goal was to merge with the NFL eventually. Yeah, and that's what like an ABA or something. Soon though, they just if they had given themselves one more year. But you know, it, it's tough to do when you're suffering the losses. They probably were. were oh yeah. Involved. I was at the Generals game when when they had the draft and Patrick Ewing was awarded to um to the Knicks, or the number one draft pick that year. And um, I mean, Flutie was there. He had Herschel Walker there, and I'm watching the New Jersey Generals, and there's thirteen thousand people at Giant Stadium. Uh, maybe you know, maybe more, maybe twenty, but it, not anything by NFL standards. It would have been good. But it, they're also in spots where they had NFL teams. Like the, the the Jets and Giants are like, what are you doing putting a team here? Like, we'll, we can't have yeah. three teams in New Jersey. You know, like <laughs> whether – you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you keeping yeah. a team there? I mean, yeah. are you going to go Oklahoma Outlaws or something? And Back then, but, I guess, know, Arizona. Well, I'm watching now. I'm watching uh, females in shorts and with tags on playing football. I mean, they're giving it to me left and right all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, on that note, listen, let's – don't you been talking Doc Sports. Me and Chip are on Gamblers World. There you go. Second half of the season, uh, we will not be wearing booty shorts like the girls playing flag football, but you can go right. to baseball for just four twenty nine dollars for the rest of the season. And all of our picks, packages for three seven thirty eights are guaranteed where if we don't show a profit, we credit you back, you jump on somebody else. we got a leaderboard, see how we're doing. NFL Thursday night, we got Bears and Texans. Folks, don't overthink just taking this total here. FanDuel had at 40 a month ago, all right? They played a second week of the season. I don't care that Caleb Williams is going to play. 
don't don't overthink this game. He's not coming out and throwing six touchdown passes. They play week two of the season. It's it's a it's a joke game. Just enjoy it for what it is. You'll be excited to just football. Uh, number two, it's baseball season. We still have two good full months of baseball left. College football on the twenty fourth. All right. So again, Doug at DocSports.com. Get all of his premium plays. Me and Chip at GamblersWorld.net. Our plays for today again. Last week eight and four. Not too bad. Plus seven ten. Doug will be going run line Pittsburgh minus 115 first five with Paul Skins. Take everything out of the equation. The guy's name is Bloss. It got lost right in his name. You know what's going to happen for the Astros here. Take the first five. All we need is a run. Can we get a run from Pittsburgh here, please? Chipper's looking at the under eight and a half with the uh, the Mets, the Yankees, and the Phillies. See, I'm, I'm used to old school when there's no interleague. Yanks, Phillies, under eight and a half. Good pitching matchup there. I don't disagree with that one. I got the Twinkies in the Mets, and I like Minnesota to take care of New York. I think they're the better team overall. I really do. Those are our three picks for today. Um, that's it. Chip, yep. Doug, I will see Doug on Thursday. Me and Chip back tomorrow with Major League Baseball. Going forward, listen, we got Football Fridays coming this month. Well, not this month. We're a day away from August. You know what I mean. New guests, live show back for Football Fridays. You don't want to miss out on that. So, uh, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're on the Twitter world, X, whatever you want to call it. Give us all a follow there. Uh, Good luck on your plays today, and we will see you tomorrow.